Day 15 was cyberpunk, so I did something a little bit different this time, no vector displacement. This time I'm using a process called ray marching, which is essentially a way to fake forms based on the position of the camera, so that you only see this effect from the point of view of the camera, which is fine because you always are the camera, so it works fine for this instance. Essentially you need to calculate the position of the camera, calculate the direction of the view, and then from there, we do this thing called a ray march, which is where you march the ray forwards. I followed a tutorial to be able to work out this effect, so link to that down in the description below. That's by Juanes Malfite. Really good tutorial, so definitely check that out if you want to have this kind of process. There's also a link for a list of SDFs, signed distance fields, and that's what I'm using to actually generate the shapes, essentially mathematical descriptions of where the surface is. So the great thing about ray marching is you get this really nice kind of weld between things. So you can really, they kind of react like meta objects, like meta balls and meta, meta planes and things where they merge together. You can see that there. Um, I had a couple of issues just with my normals just before, but then I recalculated the, there's like a step where you estimate the normals by taking two points that are very close to each other on the surface and calculate the normal from that and that allows you to make the surface of this object act as if it's the surface that we see. Um, you just need to remember that this is still on the surface of a sphere, even though as we move around it, it looks as if it's got its own shape. And the great thing about this process is that you, you don't require any geometry, and so I'm, I'm just thinking about where the forms are actually going. Using Smooth Maximum and Smooth Minimum allows me to do Boolean operations, essentially subtract and add to the form. So I'm using spheres and a rounded rectangle, rounded box. And then I've also made a line segment, which has two points that you give it as well as a radius. And I use that just in a moment to give it the neck. There we go. So you do have to be careful with no trees like this because every single one of those ray marching steps has all of this scene SDF, so the, the collection of SDFs in every single one of those steps, as well as in the estimate normal step, it has it six times. So the nodes add up really, really quickly, even though my scene SDF only has probably 100, 150 nodes, the overall node tree, once it's finished, has uh, 7,500 nodes, just because it takes so many iterations to actually get to an accurate result. So you can see I'm just adding some final details here. I wanted to have a kind of mouthpiece on this mask and I'm adding a few mask outputs. So this allows me to put certain materials on certain places. And I'm starting to work on materials now. I made the mistake of using a bump node here. Bump nodes, the way they evaluate the entire tree every step is uh, it's extremely heavy, so avoid them if you're doing ray marching. I was trying to work out if there was a way for me to get kind of uh, pointiness or ambient occlusion, but I wasn't able to find a way, but I got this kind of cool facing effect, as well as um, testing out things like adding snaps onto different bits to see if I could pixelate it or get some kind of voxel effect. So you can see as I'm working on here, when I don't have the alpha turned on, it really is just stuck on the surface of the sphere. It's just appearing for the camera. Um, I've turned down the number of ray marching steps to make it a bit lighter, but you can see that that's given me all this error with the alpha. But I've gone in and I've made this shader mixer, which is essentially allowing me to plug in lots of different colors, metallic, roughness, alpha, etc., and only have a single principal BSDF. And that makes it just a whole lot lighter. So I've worked through, I've got the painted texture and the next one I want to add is this kind of central section of the visor, which I'm having as a kind of digital screen. So I've just masked it out a little bit smaller again, and then I've used a Voronoi texture to give me a grid, a really cheap way to get a grid. And then putting that through, uh, in this case, in noise using the hue output from a separate HSV. And this gives me that kind of watercolor effect, gives me that really oversaturated blue when I put it through a color ramp and I've animated that to kind of fall down the screen. Uh, I've gone in and I've 
create a manual sort of box mapping effect. So I've got it on the front face and the top face without distortion. Remembering, of course, that this is on the sphere still, so it's not actually got that flat and top, flat front face and flat top face. Everything is on the sphere, so when it intersects a 3D texture, it appears to cut through it. So the grid from the Voronoi that was giving me circles. Carrying on here, I've added a again just a Voronoi, really basic for the uh, the fabric, just to give it some texture as well as put some masks on the pipes on the side there. This section I'm doing slightly different, so I'm kind of ignoring the ray march, and I wanted this to be like a floating heads up display kind of thing in front, just to give the illusion of eyes, kind of characterize, personify this mask a little bit more. And because the sphere is still where it is, I'm able to essentially use alpha to mask these back on top, and you can see that there. So these are actually on the surface of the sphere, whereas the other sections have been ray marched and appear as if they are inside the sphere. So the whole process is really interesting. I definitely recommend trying it. You can get some really cool effects and there we go.